so we're the Kepa family. We're a household of six, normal, loud, <laughs> messy. Um, our baby Kyrie was number five for us. So he was born uh, November last year and he was born with his angel wings. We kind of knew straight away that we just wanted to go home. We just wanted to take our baby home. And everyone up there in the room was very supportive of that and they made all the right phone calls and we kind of just um, had our time there and came home. We were real fortunate to have uh, the right people in the room with us to make all the right phone calls and contact Annie for uh, the cuddle cot, which we had no idea about anything, what we were going to, all we knew is that Kyrie was coming home with us. Um, Annie came around with the cuddle cot, she explained everything about the cuddle cot, she also handed us uh, monarchy mats. Um, explained how to use them and everything and that was totally up to us what we wanted to do, whether we wanted Kyrie in the cuddle cot and we we'll use the mats and I knew as soon as I saw the mats that that was going to be our choice. Um, we just wanted to love him, we oh, I'm gonna cry already. just wanted to hold him and the mats let us do that. He slept with us on our bed for every night. Every night. He was in the middle of us with our beds. The kids could hold him easily. Everyone who came over, all the whānau and friends, you know, we'd, um, you know, obviously say hello, have our hugs, and then we would come and meet our baby. And it was so, it was real nice that they could cuddle him however they wanted with the mats, and rather than, yeah, some of the other situations that I've heard of that people have to go through with their babies when they when they bring their babies home. Um, it wasn't until after Kyrie's service and we had said goodbye and everything that we were told that he was the first baby in Tarafati to use them. And I was start, I was shocked. I was like, wow, as soon as we heard that we were like, we need to get more of these in our community. We can't let another family go without them. So yeah, we just sort of came up with the idea of fundraising and it was good. I owned my own cake business so I was able to use that platform to bring awareness about them too and no one ever talked to us about baby death or we, it, we've never been around it at all so yeah bringing awareness to it because you just you don't know what you don't know about stuff so um, yeah it's good for everyone to learn about it whether it might happen to their friend or a family member or anything. The mats were so uh, easy to use so um, our daughter Riley she's she's nine so she kind of put herself in charge of changing the mats for Kyrie so she would come in first thing in the morning she was always the first one in the room she would come in she would pick Kyrie up and put him in the cuddle cots to make sure he still stayed cold and she would just change the mat herself. She would go into the little uh, freezer unit and grab out a new Monarchy mat and put in the old one that had, you know, defrosted a little bit and she changed changed it really easy. We had uh, one underneath him and a smaller one um, on his chest and it was hidden. You could hide them easily if you wanted to. No one, you know, a lot of people didn't realise he had one on his chest and yeah they were they were really easy to use, they were good. It's been amazing to know that Kyrie's legacy are these monarchy mats and that his story or our story is being presented all around New Zealand um, to bring awareness to these monarchy mats and it gives it, um, makes it real when you see um, photos of babies and of us holding Kyrie and just loving him, it it's, makes it a real, real topic and um, yeah, this is Kyrie's legacy and we're just so thankful to have had the opportunity.